In today's episode, I am talking to Kyle Wang. He is a partner at Valhalla Capital. Valhalla is heavily invested in the Algorand ecosystem. I really enjoyed this talk with Kyle, and I think you will too. But before that, this episode of The Recoup is brought to you by Headline Inc. Headline is building essential Algorand ecosystem tools like Pipeline UI, Algo Cloud, Algo Swap, Algo Glyph, and much, much more. In fact, today they just announced that there's going to be staking pools on Yieldly. So you're going to be able to stake the HDL token for more HDL tokens. Or you can stake your Yieldly for HDL tokens. Also, you can stake LP tokens. So folks... It's all happening over there at Headline, so check them out. Follow them on Twitter at Headline underscore crypto. All right, everybody? So without further ado, Kyle Wang from Valhalla Capital. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Recoup. I'm Cooper Daniels, and I'm a guy that knows a little about a lot. And today I am here with Kyle Wang. He is a partner at Valhalla Capital. They are heavily invested in the Algorand DeFi ecosystem. How are you doing, Kyle? Hi, I'm doing great. Really happy to be here. Really excited yeah. for the, the Recoup. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, you know, look, real quick before we dive in, earlier this year during the Tiny Man exploit, this is kind of where you, um, I mean, obviously I knew that you existed and all of that, but I really kind of zoned in on you, followed you on Twitter after a sequence of tweets you made about DeFi. And in essence, what you were saying was, hey guys, like, look, DeFi is risky and um, there's great gains to be made, but there's also risk. And, you know, that kind of thing, it was, I, I felt like it was so well-timed and so perfectly said. And so ever since then, I've been kind of following you closely. I know you love NFTs. I know you're heavily invested in, uh, you know, the DeFi. So I'm really excited for this chat is what I'm trying to say. No, absolutely. The very same. I mean, I'm really happy that uh, you read the thread, you know, thanks for yeah. reading. Like, overall, I've become somewhat, I consider myself somewhat of an expert in the topic of losing money in DeFi. So you know, it's really good to put some, yeah. some words out there and hope other people don't follow in my footsteps. So. There you go. Well, I guess you kind of pay, you know, you, you, you learn from your mistakes and you're trying to help everybody out. So, okay, well, that's a great trend. Why don't, why don't we talk a little bit about how you, uh, you know, a little bit about you, how you came to cryptocurrency, blockchain, DeFi, and, you know, what your story is a bit. Yeah, I got to tell you, like crypto really saved me right from a very like kind of very normal life, right? That, you know, oftentimes I think going through a four year university, you kind of get pushed into. Right. So for yeah. myself, my early ambitions was, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but it was just to go like, let's go to Wall Street, you know, point A to point B finance yeah. major. It's either going to be sales and trading or investment banking. Right. But luckily right. for me, I, I want to say like, you know, toward the end of like university, I chickened out, right? I was like 110 hours a week. Like nobody can work that much, right? And remain as handsome as I am, right? All the time. For so, sure. You look, you know, what are you, 25? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Someone's 16 without the beard, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, after after I decided uh, to jump into the world of consulting instead, right? Just as mm -hmm. a young person uh, traveling uh, a lot, right? Flying to different cities, you know, meeting a lot of people. That was super attractive. Uh, so I cut my teeth in a lot of the, the kind of the software world uh, at mm -hmm. IBM uh, for a number of years. But, you know, after some time, that started to get a little bit boring. You know, like after some time, you realize that the travel isn't so glamorous if they're just sending you to, you know, Rhode Island over and over. You know, no disrespect yeah. to the listeners from Rhode Island. Great place, <laughs> great city. But, you know, all the time, you know, the weather there isn't the greatest. Um, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of spending a bit more time, like just on my own, just trying to see, hey, what, what, what kind of industry would I want to move into? Like what's kind of interesting out there? Um, and I had first heard of Bitcoin maybe back in 2013 when some of my friends would mine it to buy drugs on the Silk Road, right? You know, the good right. old days, right? When yeah. Everything was very simple without all this DeFi nonsense, right? Yeah. But now, you know, uh, I think it was in 2016 or so, I revisited the topic of blockchain when I started to read uh, a couple blog articles written by Vitalik at the time, right? One of the founders mm -hmm. of Ethereum. And, uh, yeah, of you know, I quickly realized, wow, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> like everything yeah. in here was complete gobbledygook to me because I had no computer science background. But um, it seemed that a lot of people were very interested in it, right? I read a lot about these coordination problems, about consensus, and, you know, most importantly, uh, the, uh, the innovation when it comes to trustless systems, right? That blockchain kind of brings to the forefront. So I started mm -hmm. to read a lot more about Ethereum and, you know, just to kind of keep it short, I think I was really in the right place in the right time. I started to write a lot about blockchain online just to mm -hmm. kind of help myself learn, right? Because when you write about something, right, and you put it out there, you got to be very, very careful not to get embarrassed in public, right? So you well, have to I mean, that's this story sounds very, very familiar to me. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> very deeply. Uh, yeah. 
but nonetheless, you know, a lot of I, I somehow uh, a lot of people started to read my content, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, they started to reach out, and before I knew it, I had left IBM and started to work at a couple of blockchain startups. Right, mostly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, on the fundraising side, business development, and. At the time, like 2017, 2018, it was just such explosive growth, right? Like everybody, yeah. e including my Uber driver, was talking about Bitcoin and, you know, the, the new financial paradigm and all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I did a couple of years of that, right, through Bull and Bear, right, just the riding the crazy roller coaster. Um, and I really enjoyed the whole experience of just helping startups grow that uh, with a business partner that I had met online, right, and known for a couple of years, we decided to start uh, Valhalla Capital, right? And mm -hmm. you know, that's just essentially what we do today is we just try to offer a lot of support to early stage startups, try to take them through the really boring stuff so they can get to building, right? Like the, the company formation, right? Helping them with their raise, helping them like ideate on their go to market strategy and their product, all of these kind of things. Uh, so that's kind of what's been taking up uh, the majority of my time and whatever right. time I've left, I buy NFTs. So that's kind of <laughs> kind of my day. <laughs> well, I want to talk about NFTs, but we'll we'll talk about that later. So, and so obviously, uh, Valhalla is um, is heavily invested in Algorand. I don't, it's not exclusive to Algorand, correct? It's but it is it's not exclusive yet. Yeah. I mean, if I okay. had it my way, but my partners, you know, they still see some value in some of these other chains, right? Yeah. But yeah, you know, I'm I'm definitely a huge Algorand fanatic, and I've been spending a lot of time, uh, you know, talking to all the crazy big brains, right, who are looking to build yeah. an ecosystem. So what brought you to Algorand then? Or when did yeah. that journey start? Yeah. Not sure if you can see on camera, but, you know, always a great, great time to just flash Opulus, right? So there really, we go. Uh, <laughs> my good friend Miles, one of the co-founders of Opulus for really opening my eyes to Algorand. I mean, mm -hmm. in the past, I've had a little bit of Algorand. I've traded, you know, just Al Algo token, right? Um, right. Uh, quite a number of times, but it was really like, you know, my friend Miles, he's coming from the venture world and, you know, he's very entrepreneurial. He decided to start Opulus and he's, he was, had worked on a number of other startups I was familiar with before too, but I kind of, it kind of raised the question for me, you know, why are you building on Algorand? And uh, it was through him, right? I met a lot more people in the ecosystem. I saw kind of early on uh, how there were a lot of like really incredible founders like building on it. I um, also like to credit Henrik Anderson at Apollo Capital, right? He introduced me to Michael and AJ, right? Great ecosystem boosters, uh, founders of Algomint and, you know, VCs themselves. So just yeah. through talking to a number of these people, I just saw the the incredible potential here. It's really such a green field, right? Um, right. By, even now is, in my view, just kind of getting started compared to a lot of these other mature chains. So, you know, both as an investor and as just a ecosystem, like, user, right? DeFi fanatic, like Algorand just seemed to be where all the fun uh, was going to be over the next couple of years. Right. Right. I mean, it, it feels brand new. I mean, it's been a bumpy road this, the beginning of this year, it feels like, and maybe, and maybe we're, maybe the guys, you know, on discord and stuff, we're feeling the bumps a little more because we're so focused on the today rather right. than seeing maybe a, the bigger picture that is kind of unfolding. But like, you know, earlier in the year with Tiny Man and then, you know, there's been some rug pulls lately. And I mean, what do you what do you think the current what do you think of the current state of Algorand DeFi? Yeah, I think right now, you know, obviously it's extremely early. Right. So everything I say, you know, we should really color it with that grain of salt. But yeah, I would say right now it's still very Wild West. Right. And it kind of reminds me a lot of the early days of many other ecosystems where there aren't really uh many safeguards or many kind of central, uh, maybe central is the wrong word, but many like established authorities, right? When it comes to, you know, this is a blue chip project or this is a really good ASA with a very good team behind it. Really, right. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's part of the, the joy of the democratization, I guess, of, uh, you know, being able to launch tokens on, on Tiny Man or on, uh, you know, or launching your own projects. And what happens is I think most of the community is kind of left for themselves, right? To go and kind of figure out if, if this is something that uh, has longevity, if this is something where the devs are uh, in it for the long term versus kind of more of like a, uh, you know, a rug pull, right? Or something that's kind of more short term or scammy. Um, right. Kind of seen on Twitter, especially that uh, with any growing ecosystem, you'll have a lot of these growing pains where you have these, you know, we'll just call it specific to the Algorand ecosystem. All of these yeah. ASAs that kind of fly by, right? Like day after day, yeah. there's like a couple of new, like, you know, 10 to 20 new ones that people get excited about and they quickly just disappear into obscurity. Yeah. Uh, but just the existence of them, of course, doesn't negate the, uh, the really, really strong like projects that are building in the background and that are coming to market either. Yeah. And you're invested in a lot of these very strong projects. I saw that, 
Algomint is something that um, you're invested in, which is obviously live running, running well. And, um, you know, Algo Guard, I believe as well. That's an exciting project. Why don't you, can you give us a little breakdown on real quick on Algo Guard and what, what you see there and the potential there? Yes. Let me uh, just just to commit a, a couple of words, just kind of more generally, and I'll bring it to AlgoGuard. But just in general, like with with DeFi, right? Specifically, especially for those of you who've been around for a while, you know that there's a lot of kind of primitives, right, or kind of building blocks for DeFi to work, right? So right. Some of them are stable coins, right? Exchanges, mm -hmm. lending protocols, uh, oracles, oracle services, right? So to grab price data, so everyone yeah. can. Know. You know what the prices are, etc. So these are all kind of, in my view, like very important pieces of any kind of finance, DeFi kind of ecosystem, right? So that's yeah. kind of for that reason that kind of follows the uh, the thesis of a lot of our investments in Algorand, right? Just trying to pick out some strong teams that are building in those verticals. So AlgoGuard, we believe, yeah. is one such very strong team. I mean, they're incredible founders, uh, and uh, I was really blown away even from the first time I met them. But what I really like about their solution, um, it's what they're creating is an algorithmic stable coin, but it's extremely, uh, in my view, an extremely elegant solution, right? So mm -hmm. unlike a lot of other algorithmic stable coins where it's, it exists in isolation and it might be backed by uh, some clever, uh, you know, incentive mechanism or might be backed by collateral perhaps, right? What mm -hmm. they're kind of doing is they're looking specifically at, uh, uh, an opportunity cost problem, right? Of Algorand staking, right? Algorand right. governance, as you know, today, you put a lot of your Algorand uh, in your wallet, you commit it, and the idea is that you don't move it or you lose your rewards, right? Before the end yeah. of the governance period. So what they're kind of coming up with, which I thought was a fantastic idea, is they create uh, another kind of wallet uh, instance, right? That's still decentralized. You still own the keys to it, but it's a wallet with a special smart contract overlaid in it that enables them to liquidate, right? Or, or to claw back some of the Algorand from your wallet if you've if the value has fallen too much or you've taken out too much Algorand, right? So right. why is that useful? That's useful because then you can, again, create uh, a stable coin that's backed by that Algorand, right? And you can right. create that liquidity. Uh, so, you know, in simple terms, right? Today, when you co commit Algo to governance, it just kind of sits there. It's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's dead money, but you can't really do anything with it other than just go watch it, like watch the grass grow, right? Watch the yield come. <laughs> um, and now yeah. the idea is that you can keep earning that yield, keep your algorithm there, but then borrow a percentage of that in guard stable coin, right? Which you That's can so use good. somewhere else, right? So. Yeah, I mean, that sounds super exciting. And you also, you mentioned an Oracle. So it sounds like what you're focused on and what you said is that you're trying to build all of the, you know, we're at the beginning, like you said, a yeah. green field of DeFi. So get all of the things in order that that a, a solid DeFi needs. And an Oracle, you mentioned, I had spoken to Algo Oracle recently. They're building an exciting product. Mm -hmm. um, Abdul seems, I mean, I, I, I was really, I had a great chat with him. Um, so yeah, are you guys, are you guys invested in Algo Oracle as well? Yeah, so we're supporting them a lot uh, in this early stage. I think they're awaiting a really, really large foundation grant, but uh, we will count ourselves definitely among one of their earliest supporters. They'll likely do a, a raise soon, but it's just like, to, again, like the, it's the same kind of theme, right? You just have a really tremendous, hungry, intelligent team going after something yeah. that's vastly needed in the ecosystem. So when we see founders like that, like obviously we can't miss the chance to support them, right? Whether we invest yeah. or not, I might add. So it's yeah. just very, very exciting. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, Prismatic. I, I spoke to uh, Natalie recently uh, from Prismatic. I think you know her. I, I think you've met her yeah, before, I, I right? Might, yeah. I might be familiar with her. I'll have to check <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that's the treasury management tools. I mean, it's just it, there's there is so many things. I use AlgoFi and AlgoMint. There's mm -hmm. there's so many. Uh, it's just it's a growing thing. So okay, and you also. Um, you know, I look, you know, as I quickly look at your Twitter profile, you have DAOs on there. Uh, I don't know much about these, but Neptune DAO, I believe, and Red DAO. Um, what, what is going on there? What are you, um, what's happening with the DAOs? What do you see even, you can talk about those specifically and what you see happening in Algorand and the DAO infrastructure that you see here. Yeah, um, more specifically with Neptune DAO and Red DAO, they're, they're, yeah. two, uh, they're two types of, uh, I would I would almost consider them venture DAOs, right? So it's kind of unusual in the sense that they're kind of more uh, they're kind of more uh, kind of gated, right? In the sense that they're all uh, built under a legal structure. Everyone who's a part of them has to be accredited. So in a sense, they're a DAO, but they're kind of more more uh, 
similar to a, a very structured fund versus a lot of these other DAOs we may be familiar with that anybody mm -hmm. can join, right? Um, and again, getting more specific, like Neptune DAO is a liquidity providing DAO. So the purpose there is that members pool their funds to essentially yield farm across different protocols and just try to generate yield, right, for all the members and return uh, as high of an ROI as you can. Um, mm -hmm. For Red DAO, it's, I'm, I'm particularly excited about that because the main focus on, of Red DAO is to acquire fa like fashion related NFTs. So, oh. you know, Dolce in Gabbana, Gucci, right? These kind of brands are have a keen eye toward NFTs and metaverse, right? Uh, right. For like, and these for, kind of for obviously for your avatar, but also like those those NFTs can be for like authentication and stuff right. like that, right? They're Let's not those, like, ahead of ourselves. So I mean, the avatar is the most important part, but you know, these are <laughs> other happy happy coincidences. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but uh, I guess more generally to kind of uh, you know just kind of take a step back and looking more outside in, right? Uh, I, th I think uh, a lot of these like DAO experiments on, on, a lot, on a lot of these other chains are extremely exciting, right? The way that yeah. you can bring in either uh, just crowdsource like purchases, right? Like DAOs that raise like millions of dollars to, to acquire like works of art or NFTs or make yeah. investments, et cetera, or more working DAOs where people get together for a common purpose to create a project, to, you know, uh, to essentially like vote or, or create like specific uh, governance actions, et cetera. It's very, very exciting. And I'm mm -hmm. getting to see a lot of uh, these same uh, kind of experiments or uh, augmentations, I suppose, of these experiments on Algorand, right? Like there's mm -hmm. multiple NFT DAOs in the works to, you know, buy board Apes or buy uh, more expensive NFTs on other chains and maybe even bring them to Algorand, right? Mm. I've seen uh, investment DAOs in the works, launchpad DAOs, et cetera. So it's still early days, of course, like, like for most things on Algorand, but DAOs are definitely yeah. no exception. For sure. You know, okay, as I'm listening to you talk, I'm, you clearly know what you're talking about. So now I'm going to take yeah. an opportunity for... Uh... <laughs> I'm going to take an opportunity. So, okay. In Algorand, there are obviously state proofs are coming. And there, I was reading about C3 Protocol. Um, are you guys affiliated with C, uh, C3 Protocol? Oh, we're um, not. But I think but, I've definitely come across some of the team members. I mean, they're yeah. obviously super, super bright, backed by incredible people. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, just when it comes to state proofs and a protocol like that, right? Can you, how excited, because this whole bridging to other blockchains, you know, making sure that there's interoperability. And it seems like, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, El Salvador, it seems like Algorand is really helping scale Bitcoin. And then as these state proofs and things like C3 protocol exist, it almost seems like it could help scale something like Ethereum, right? And right. I'm wondering, what is your what is your thought about state proofs? Maybe even for anybody out there that doesn't quite understand what that even means. Um, if you have, if you have, like, if you, you want to break that down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So state proofs, like I think most popularly, right. Uh, very, very like, um, the very high level marketing for state proofs is that they provide quantum security, right. For the algorithm right. blockchain, but more yeah. so than that, it's very interesting because it allows, uh, like many, many, uh, I guess like to, to kind of use an example, it allows a lot of like different verifiers to, um, for instance, like report, uh, data, right. Uh, on, on the chain, right? So for instance, right. like a weather oracle, right? So another another really good use of it is just for bridging between blockchains, as you kind of mentioned, right? So a yeah. DAP that could run on uh, Algorand, but also use a set of validators uh, to check like the state of like something on Ethereum, for instance. So that's very, very powerful, right? It enables a lot of like reaching cross chain to get, get data in a way that hasn't been possible before. Um, yeah. I think um, another another uh, element of state proofs that uh, is also quite interesting is just that it increases the overall efficiency. So instead of using like a ton of like new nodes, right, to catch up on the the state of the blockchain, right? Um, um, sorry, instead of reading, excuse me, instead of reading like, the state of the entire blockchain, I'm tripping over my own words here. Yeah. Uh, you can just get the current state of, of the blockchain from the current nodes, right, with with the state proof kind of functionality. So overall, right. like, it's it's kind of like. Uh, Another uh, another set of just like improvements on Algorand's like roadmap, right? That should just get everyone very very excited. Um, mm -hmm. There's just so many like different uh, kinds of advantages that the Algorand blockchain brings, right? That's just not present on a number of other chains. And a number of other chains, I think, you know, not to speak too disparagingly of them, but they kind of put more of the easy way out, where they either seek to be EVM compatible, so they're more or less a clone with a couple different features, right? Or they optimize for certain things that may not be as beneficial for a blockchain focused on financial transactions, right? Yeah. So again, you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I do think it means something that the Algorand network has never been down, right? And I think that's right. that kind of a sense of security, right? That sense of a, 
you know, always being on and always being present. I think that's just so important for what uh, what these financial dApps are trying to do. Right. I mean, especially when it comes to, like you said, financial dApps and then like governments and large institutions, the security and the fact that it's not down like, you know, some of these other you're hearing all the time, for example, like Solana or whatever, it might be down for a while. I mean, there's a lot of good things about Solana as well. I'm not trying to, like you said, disparage other chains, but it does seem like that security and that, um, that, you know, reliability is going to be very desirable. Right. Yes, definitely. And, you know, just a couple words on Solana. I mean, I think Solana, uh, I know that in the community, right, like this, there's definitely like kind of different, different attitudes, right, toward other blockchains. Like my view has always really been that it's just so early in Web3. It's, you know, even though it's always fun to kind of rally around, like, you know, your blockchain and we're the best and everything. But really, the the, the trick of the matter is, is that the pie is so large. Right. And I think Algorand uh, has has a very, very strong niche to fill of financial transactions overall. Uh, while competing right. with a lot of these other chains. Um, I'll also add this kind of quick comment. I mean, I've had this conversation recently with some friends about whether they think the future like is going to be more multi-chain or maybe if it's more right. winner takes all. And I think that just given the power of the communities, right, we have the Algorand community being a really great example. I really think that all of these chains or, or the majority of these chains will survive out into the future, right? Um, but uh, I think these technical differences do at the end of the day matter uh, when it comes to larger institutions and governments, right. About who they'll want to work with. Right. So, yeah, you so as you're seeing, you're seeing Algorand is playing a very important role in a specific niche, but there is going to be many winners is what you're saying. Cause there is, I, I remember at Decipher, there was a really compelling talk. That was a chain of chains talk. And, you know, there was definitely people that are like bridges and no the, Algorand yeah. is the chain. And, you know, obviously there you're at Decipher. So you're getting a lot of applause for that. <laughs> opinion right right but, uh and and you know i i mean maybe it is i like to joke about how i'm going to throw a bronze medal party for algorand for getting third place you know there's lots of i mean i'm very excited about we're all excited about algorand that's why you're here this my channel is mainly focused on algorand so clearly right. i have that feeling right but, but um, add also for those uh, people who are kind of a bit more skeptical about bridging and these kind of things i mean yeah you, you always want the best product to to win out in the end right i think that's the right. best thing for not only the ecosystem but on a more philosophical air er- my like area for humanity right and by having bridges like if algorand if you truly believe that algorand is a superior product then really you should welcome as many bridges as you can right because you want the yeah. capital the smart money to flow to algorand in as quick of a way as, as sure. expeditious a way as possible so that's and so and that's and that's something that c3 protocol is bringing uh is bringing to the chain right that's something that sure. you know and that and i also talked to glitter finance recently they're obviously working on bridges as well so yeah. there's a lot there's a lot being built you know i saw also that i believe um uh folks finance is coming soon is that is that something you're excited about i'm just kind of running through all the things that i'm excited no, about course. coming. <laughs> folks is absolutely great i mean yeah well, uh i've uh i've had a great great opportunity to meet benedetto in person a number of times over the past couple months and mm-hmm. filippo as well his creative director like it's just a group of very very passionate guys right um and, and this isn't like private information anymore but i also love like this nft series you always have to give a shout out for those right yeah I'm putting out i think it's just very very cute little guys these folks right uh but more well, so i haven't seen that, i haven't seen those Oh, well, you'll, you're in for a treat. So, you know, <laughs> the big unveiling, right? But yeah, yeah overall, like, I'm, I'm also very excited about folks. Um, I think that what this ecosystem really needs is just kind of more like, uh, you know, just very stable, like, DeFi products and sources, right? If one goes down, you always have something like, you know, uh, you always have another kind of application you can use. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe not the best example because, you know, credit cards, credit cards, right? But uh, it's always good to have a second credit card, right? In case, like, one of them. Yeah isn't working for whatever reason. Uh, right. And I kind of alluded to this in my tiny man post, but it's just, we're so early in the ecosystem that we should, uh, you know, expect right there to be like hiccups and bugs and these kind of things, no matter the audits or no matter the intent of the founders It's just, you know, writing new code is very hard. Right. So, yeah, but over time it will get better. It'll get better. Okay. So, all right. So I feel like we talked nicely about that. Let's maybe we can transition to some of the more fun things. Like uh, maybe we'll start with GameFi and like the metaverse and yeah. what is, you know, just what are you thinking of the metaverse in general, really? Like, are you, are you excited about this potential for us kind of embodying the internet, you know, further and how, you know, avatars, we brought it up and having our Dolce Gabbana or our Rolexes or whatever, but like all the opportunity for creators and, uh, NFTs and, you know, and how that maybe relates and what you're seeing in Algorand and, you know, 
what do you what are you seeing there about the metaverse and well i'll tell you that it's it's 3 p.m here where i am right and if uh -huh. i had to take a shot for every time metaverse came up in conversation like i would definitely be <laughs> horizontal right now not do this interview. so that kind of just speaks to the amount of interest uh you know metaverse the idea of the yeah. concept of metaverse has really inspired and in not only crypto people but across like so many different uh industries right um, oh yeah i'll get back to your question very quickly but even yeah. even a couple of days ago uh, there was a friend of a friend I met here, uh, you know, uh, in Puerto Rico, where she, uh, you know, runs this big fashion brand. And I think that she even created like dresses that uh, Katy Perry wore, something very large following. And her mm -hmm. number one concern is like, how can I launch these NFTs, right? These fashion NFT wearables in the metaverse. Yeah. Right? So she was asking like, hey, can I speak to you about how it can form a DAO here, the legal side of it, right? So the interest is is definitely like huge, right? With metaverse. I mean, mm -hmm. even Facebook changing their name, right? Just a perfect uh, kind of uh, symbol of our times. Uh, but yeah. in terms of like for myself more specifically, like philosophically, maybe this is more of a hot take, right? But I yeah. think I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid, I'll be honest. Like I just, I think that when I think of metaverse, I think of a lot of these dystopian like novels or like or like you know movies ready player one yeah ready player one wally oh, yeah. is another one right where you were just yeah. all enormous and we're feeding tubes and we're all living yeah. you know a completely different <laughs> world i don't think it has to be that but uh there's a cynical part of me that that thinks that you know companies uh especially centralized companies will make the most money right if yeah if we're plugged in all the time and we just get very fast yeah. consuming well and, and i have i have young children Ooh. that are already all they want to do is you know watch YouTube. So they're going to be growing up in this world. And, you know, you can really, it's already happening with technology, this kind of, you know, blurring of the lines of reality. And if we're fully, you know, with goggles and playing in these worlds, like it can get scary for mental health and things like that. I would, I it's would assume. Coming. It's coming whether you like it or not. Right? Or not. Cooper, I mean, know, I'm curious as a father, like how do you kind yeah. of approach that with your children? Do you try to limit their screen time or oh, are you yeah. kind of more like this is the future, you know, just embrace it? <laughs> no, no, I'm very, I'm very limiting. Like, like I'm terrified for when they don't know anything about social media or anything like that yet. They're, they're still young, five and seven, but um, like, I'm not a big, I, personally, I'm not, I mean, because I'm doing this, I'm on Twitter and discord and, but I had completely removed myself from social media and I found myself to be much happier. But now that, but now that my conversations are all crypto related, social media is fine. You know, so like I don't, I don't mind it anymore. But so yeah, I am worried about it. I'm worried about it because, and I definitely limit how much they can watch. They want to watch YouTube, and you know, they're, you know, I, I hear these strange Australian accents and weird videos that they're watching that, that I that they love. You know, but at this, and he, my son is the older one and he wants to do Roblox and I'm kind of slowing him into that. So, you know, it's more, we're more Mario. I still have control, but I know that the grip is, I'm losing it. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm in concerned. You don't have any children, right? No, not yet, no, but I'm sure no. when I have them, that will be at the top of my mind. Like, should I be oh, controlling their, how much I should be controlling their screen time? Or, I know. You know I, I know how stimulating screen time can be, right? It's just, I'm sure, like, I remember watching, like, uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of, I can't remember if it was some documentary or something, just saying how many ads people see every day, right? Oh, I know. Um, and this is, like, another discussion maybe, but overall, like, I've come, I've become fully like convinced that the the world is really run by advertisements. The smartest oh. people in the world are tucked in these tech kind of cities like Silicon Valley just to uh, create new ways for you to just look at your screen as long as possible, right? So I you can know. see them. Yeah. Well, you know, and I and I see it, you know, when I let my, you know, because it's also as a parent, it's a it's relief, you know, you, you they go watch YouTube and you get some time to focus on the things that you need to focus on. Right. They're not asking you for everything. But I see it. If you let them do it, it's just it dulls the edges a little bit. Too much screen. You know, I even see it with myself. I now I'm attached. I'm attached to the screen. So anyways, uh, yeah, so I am concerned. And but the, the metaverse is obviously there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of potential. You know, I see, for example, I read recently, I think it was in the Philippines. You know, there are people making a living, you know, the main source of their income on things like Axie Infinity. So there is there's so much potential for this play to earn and a lot of excitement. You know, I. It'd be pretty cool to be able to sit courtside at a Knicks game from, you know, my apartment in uh, in Los Angeles or something like that. If that's the future, I mean, I'm in or a concert, you know, but uh, yeah. One thing that would be interesting uh, just uh, just for me to share is that I think it's very interesting when it comes to 
uh, the, the target market for a lot of these play to earn games, right? Because mm. I've seen kind of projects of all kinds, right? Some of them who are building more simple, more simpler kind of mobile game esque uh, games like Axie Infinity, right? Where it can kind of be something that's more of a grind that you can kind of just play at a much more simpler level that even children could play, right? And then, yeah. of course, there's also like more complex games that might be like, you know, the, the classic like massively multiplayer online role-playing games or MMORPGs or these kind of things with much more sophisticated mechanics. I'm very excited to kind of see what comes out on the other end. But the one thing I have noticed is that actually in the hardcore gaming community, right, the people who are playing a lot of these first-person shooters, more competitive games, or just playing, you know, video games at a more hardcore level, generally have a very strong distrust, right, uh, for NFTs and the blockchain stuff, right? And to be honest, I don't really blame them because, you know, NFTs are definitely something that can be very easily like abused, right? Just to kind of, you know, extract money, right? From your supporters and everything. But I do yeah. think uh, from what I've kind of noticed that there's definitely a long way to go, I think, to win the confidence of a lot of more uh, hardcore traditional gamers with a lot yeah. of these mechanics, right? And of course we have to perfect these mechanics too, right? Before right. we can actually see widespread use. Are you are you a gamer? Do you consider yeah, yourself well, a gamer? Uh, I, I feel like <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like how, all right, this is like the dumbest comparison ever, but I'm just going to roll with it, right? So like, Go you know, like a lot of Olympic athletes are just kind of like, yeah, but you know, I'm not really an athlete anymore. I'm not really a swimmer anymore, right? Right. So that's how I feel with gaming because I used to game very, very hard and now okay. I don't have as much time. So I don't think I could probably wear that mantle anymore, you know? Like, yeah, you're I retired. Up a controller or anything. So, yeah. you know. Well, very I... I've had some um, I've had some roommates in the past that were very dedicated to gaming and ah. you know, they, they prioritized what their, their drug. of What was their uh, pick of poison? What, was, what was it? What was the one where you're I, he he was really into this was a long time ago when I lived in New York. Uh, but um, he was really into the one where you built amusement parks. Oh, like Roller Coaster Tycoon, right? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's and then good. I think, you know, there was all the big ones. But yeah. Okay, so when you look at when you look at Algorand, what are some of these GameFi kind of play to earn um, projects that you see coming in the pipeline that you're most excited about? Yeah, I mean, I, I know that one that's uh, kind of more further along. They kind of released a beta, right? That came out of the Miami Accelerator. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a project called Alchemon, right? So I know the oh, yeah. uh, the founder Cliff and and the. Uh, uh, the team itself is quite active on Twitter as well. But mm -hmm. I think that's one that seems to be quite f further along. And I know that their ambition, of course, is to compete with Axie Infinity, right, and, and everything. Uh, but just gaming in general, I think there's like a number of cool stuff, right? I mean, yeah. uh, I think uh, Chris, at, Chris at Reach is creating Game Jam Protocol, right, which is oh, cool. focused on a new way to do loot boxes, right, in gaming, kind of more oh. plug and play, uh, these kind of elements. But yeah, you know, gaming stuff, I think on Algorand, it's still very early, you know, it sounds like a broken record, but yeah. it's definitely there, right? Like I'm right. seeing these projects put their best foot forward to try to create games, uh, you know, using the Algorand blockchain, right, in some way, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, having some sort of tokenized like economy, right, using ASA. Yeah. And so I guess that that'll bring us that's a nice transition towards NFTs. And so you're into it. I'm I'm sort of I'm I'm relatively new to uh, this NFT addiction, but I've done, it's got a grip on me a little bit. And, uh, and I, and I don't have a lot of perspective. I mean, I haven't been active on Ethereum before, or, you know, anything like that. This is I, Algorand is really kind of my gateway drug to this addiction, but just from when I've been, I've been paying attention maybe for six months. Right. Right. And just from about six months ago to now, it seems like there has been a, an explosion. Am I, Am I am I just in a bubble or is there this this ecosystem seems to be getting much bigger and more dynamic and a lot more money in it and the prices and everything? What do you are, what are you seeing about the Algorand? Yeah, NFTs? for sure. I think yeah. I think it's really been an explosion. I don't think it's just you. I mean, I can see it <laughs> in my own portfolio. Right. Like when I first started collecting NFTs, I was yeah. just. Uh, extremely addicted, right? Probably, probably just like you. Like, yeah, uh, I was very excited for uh, this uh, MNGO uh, drop, right? So the, the yeah. beautiful birds. So I actually bought like two hundred of them, right? And oh, good for you! Know, you. So each one of them was like, I think the uh, to unpack it, un unpack or mint each one, it was like fifty algo, right? And oh. now we're like, I, I think like you know, scarcely a couple months later, uh, and like I think the floor, it's like crazy. It's like seven hundred or something, right? So yeah, the end is definitely there, and there are buyers, right? There's a lot of volume being transacted yeah. so it's super exciting and you see that with the goana project you see that with yeah. a lot of top uh, nft projects uh, also but um i think like in general you know it's it's definitely algorand specific in a sense because you know there's more artists there's more uh, 
uh, interest, right? There's also more publicity, both from the foundation, from, uh, you know, uh, big uh, ecosystem investors like Borderless, et cetera. But I yeah. think on a micro scale too, I think NFTs are really just taking off. I mean, uh, in both of, in two of my conversations this morning, right? Uh, we both, both the, the topic of Board Ape Yacht Club came up, right? And yeah. we just had to share that, like, it's kind of surreal, right? It feels like a really weird timeline when you're on Twitter and Twitter suggests like, you know, celebrities or, you know, people you should be following, right? And I see yeah. a board ape and right next to the name that you get the check mark and it says Gwyneth Paltrow, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, and that's, a, I know I saw uh, Justin Bieber bought one recently. Uh -huh. I know M Eminem bought one, you know, it's, I don't, I, I like, that's something, I mean, I know that the board ape yacht club. So what does that give you access to? Can you, maybe yeah. what, what is the yacht club? What, what's going on over there? Yeah. So I think the easiest way to kind of understand it and I have to, I've, embarrassingly have to admit it took me a long time actually to see the value the community mm -hmm. value of just nfts right and why they could be worth something right and not just the old like boomer oh i can copy and paste it or whatever right right so for me like word of yacht club the best way to kind of like understand it is like hey like you know think about real world yacht clubs right like people are joining these real world yacht clubs maybe ostensibly on the surface okay maybe they like like boating right and going out in boats but really yeah. it's just the idea of like people love exclusivity right they love being right. part of something greater than themselves they love being part of a community and feeling like they belong, right? Yeah. So with Board Apes, right? Like first and foremost, it's a community, right? It's a massive discord, right? For all the people who own Mutant Apes and Board Apes, right? I think it has something like 40,000, 40, maybe 50,000 people in that discord, just insane. But wow. uh, more, uh, more concretely, right? Beyond the membership benefits of being able to be part of this big club, right? Uh, yeah. And being part of this like uh, being part of like these like merch drops or like little perks, like small games that they create or, or, or drops of other NFTs for holders. I think the key kind of thing, and that's why a lot of these like celebrities, musicians, et cetera, are kind of jumping on. It's really the intersection of crypto and culture, which is very, very like powerful, right? Like once yeah. people believe in something and once uh, people can ascribe meaning to something, right? Like Cooper, like if, for instance, if, if someone were to meet you who you've never met before in Web3 and the first time they meet you, they go to your Twitter and you have a bored ape, as like a profile picture, they can already make a couple of assumptions about you, right? And I think that's what's really, really powerful, right? Yeah, I know. I definitely, I dropped the ball on the Gowanas. I, I, you know, you you sense it. Like you see, oh, that person's got a, so they've been around for a bit. Exactly. Or they, yeah. they made a good decision, you know, or, you know, whatever. Or, you know, there's a status and, you know, I, there, I, I definitely made a couple of mistakes. I was excited about uh, the G-Raps and, and I just didn't, um, and the Gowanas, and I just, you know, I dropped the ball on those. So, oh, no, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself. I mean, I'm just, so I know I'm mad. I'm <laughs> <laughs> if I were if I were hard on myself on all the times I dropped the ball, like I would again be horizontal, but not because I'm drunk, you know, just out of depression. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm a pretty I'm I'm pretty I, I like to joke and jokingly be hard on myself, but I understand that I can't make all the right decisions, right? We're all we all make mistakes. So okay, so then now you're here, and so we have the NFTs. Are there any like I'm not trying to get you to pick and choose your, you know your favorite NFTs or anything, but. Um, is there anything that, you know, are you looking, are, are you looking at some maybe lesser known NFT projects? Maybe, maybe so I don't miss out. Uh, are you, are you, is there anything you're excited about that you're seeing out there in the NFT space? I just see, like, for, for me, my, my excitement about the NFT space is a bit more general in Algorand. And the reason yeah. I'll say that, like, for instance, I saw Giraffes is doing really, really well. Um, the, uh, the creator of Giraffes actually reached out to me on Twitter. Like, I think it was maybe a couple months back. Right. So I had a mm -hmm. lovely conversation uh, with her and like she's just amazing right and it's yeah. just so like it just so i never bought any giraffes myself foolishly right but right. overall like, it's just kind of outside looking in i'm just super happy for her right that she's able to achieve this success it's the same for you know uh the goana project right it's the same yep. for a lot of these other creators um who have had a uh, you know the uh the 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 uh the privilege i guess of just kind of hearing some of their personal stories about uh right. you know I won't, I won't say anyone specifically but for instance like you know some of these creators like just them selling these nfts have taken them out of like periods of like very very horrible like financial strain or they were able to afford uh you know health care yep. for a loved one etc like we love to hear these stories and uh, I also love that on the Algorand NFT ecosystem, there's really a big focus on doing good, right? Whether that's yes. going to, you know, donations to children's hospitals, to planting trees, to breast cancer survivors. Like, I think that's such yeah. a great orientation. 
Well, and that's ex- and that's exactly the truth of it for for me as well. I, for a few weeks, I've been doing something on my Friday show where artists of Algorand, where I try to um, you know focus on an artist and their work, and if they are will, if they're generous to share a couple details about their story, then I like to do that. And it's it, it you know I I joke about missing out and stuff like that, but it doesn't. I don't need to own a NFT from a project in order to celebrate the success of an artist, like you're saying, you see, because it gives a platform to people from all over the world. You know, I talked about Pyrenees Pack recently, and he's a guy, you know, from immigrant parents in the deep South. And, and he just had a baby, he's back into art. And now he's like, you know, you know, bringing some, bringing some home uh, to draw some, you know, to through his art. So I love that story and I love supporting it. So yeah. And this also guys, there's totally nothing wrong with just like, I know there's a, a kind of like a culture as well, right? As, as there often is in NFT communities where you just want to buy things that you think will really go up in value and you can flip it and all these kind of things. Right? <laughs> yeah. But in me, I also, for, for me, I think there's also nothing wrong with just buy stuff that you like, right? Like yeah. for instance, my girlfriend has bought a lot of these, like, I think they're called kiss bits, right? Yeah. I saw that. that we're familiar with, but <laughs> like, they just look so like great, right? They look so cute. And you know, maybe yeah. they'll be worth more money one day. Maybe they won't, but it's just the act is like, of just buying it and supporting the creator can just be very fulfilling and feel very good. Right. And, um, you know, I'll just also tell this quick, like kind of, it was just very amusing to me that someone was like, I think it was someone from the Goana discord. Right. Cause he was just noticing that I buy a lot of NFTs and he's just saying like, yeah, my wife like just does not understand. Right. She oh, doesn't feel from me buying these <laughs> images. Just, how do you get, like, is this something you run into? Is that a problem with your girlfriend? Like, is your girlfriend like get really oh. angry when you buy all these NFTs? And I was like, actually it's a contrary. I'm trying to tell her to stop, stop. Buying <laughs> <NFTs."> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm jealous. I know. I, I actually, I think I commented on your girlfriend's uh, tweet of, like about, a month or a few weeks ago at jealous uh, expressing jealousy about uh she was excited about a gift uh i think you gifted her an nft right, for right, christmas right. or something yeah, and so yeah. uh yeah yeah so i uh, my wife is definitely one of those people but i'm slowly getting her you know she she really liked um algo starface she liked oh, these, i love it she, I love she liked the star she was like wait a second i like that yeah, maybe and, your life uh, will begin to take them more seriously once your NFT is worth more than an Hermes bag, right? Then all of a sudden it's like, whoa. She's like, well, maybe she's there's, here. <laughs> there's been a couple where she's like, wait, what? You got that for that? And now, it's, now you can get that? Okay, well, all right. I guess you can keep keep doing it. Uh, I know. It's, but, it's, it's so funny. It's so funny. I, I've, it, I've definitely had some friends in the space where there's significant others like, really came around when they realized, oh, wow, like it's up like that much. Like, wow, yeah. keep doing yeah. it, babe. Like keep buying, keep Well, buying. I told her, I, I I keep on telling her because I, I, well, I'll stop talking about this, but there was a G rap that I liked and it, there was, it was like kind of metaverse and I was like, oh, that'd be a really cool profile picture. I was like, I think I'm going to buy this. It's only 150 algo. And then she was like, you know what? How about no? Like, and she got all mad at me. So I like, and I was like, what are you talking about? So I just let it go. And now I like to show her, I'm like, hey, do you want to, scroll um ran gallery for a second would you like to what would you like to see <laughs> how much your little anger at me about giraffe uh yeah it didn't make a lot of, sense. of my friends uh who who early on were buying wanted to buy a lot yeah. of bitcoin but their wives or girlfriends are like no so they've they've yeah. they've informed me i've learned that the, the first thing that a lot of significant others hate is when you buy cryptocurrency back then right and the second yeah. thing they hate more is like if you go back and rub it in their face so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i have there yeah i have a couple examples Examples that she's leaving me alone. Let's just say that she's starting to leave me alone. Um, all right, man. Well, look, I hope this wasn't too painful for you. I uh, I really enjoy talking to you, and uh, I, I think that Algorand is very lucky to have you guys, um, you know, helping support. And I think the NFT community is excited, you know, is lucky. And so, you know, hopefully, I'll see you in Denver, and uh, we can meet each other in person. And yeah. Yeah, I'm so, listen, I'm so excited for Denver. It's really beginning to feel like a Decipher 2.0 kind of vibe, right? I mean, yeah. so many uh, Algorand like, people in general going. So I'm sure it's just going to be a fantastic time. And I, I simply sure. can't wait. Yeah, me too. All right, man. Well, have a good rest of your day. And hopefully, you know, you'll come back, come back on and we can chat again. Absolutely, Cooper. Thanks for the time. Had a great All one. Right. Take care. All right, thank you.